Today we're looking at the Mayano PD200X USB and XLR microphone. Now this is a dynamic style microphone, um, but that's not even the exciting part that it has XLR as well as USB. And this is a sub $100 microphone. Mayano, thank you for sending this out for me to review and to test and to share with all of you. So as normal, my own thoughts, you got the Mayono USB XLR podcast dynamic microphone PD200X. It talks about their success and that they are a global brand. They are a global brand and they have a ton of products. I'm not going to drain this side for you, um, but it's a two on one digital knob in the front. It controls the mic gain as well as the headphone volume. There's a mute button, microphone capsule, metal body, USB-C and RGB switch on the back with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Um, I mean, that's pretty much, you know, they're repeating it just on the side there. Okay, first thing we're greeted with is going to be the manual. There is the sound curve there. It gives you the stats for the, or the specifications for the microphone and I'll put those up on the page, uh, this particular page here, which talks about the Mayon Link, which is their software. So I'm excited because that software allows you to change the sound of this microphone. It's a USB-C to USB-C with the USB-A adapter, a adapter here for your boom arm, just in case the one that you have is a different size. Looks like a five eighths there. The microphone itself, and as you can see, it's, it comes on a shock absorber there, shock mount, um, looks like, Looks like you can loosen it and change the direction of the microphone depending on um, how you have it mounted on your desk. But this is a this is a metal body, so it's a metal body. There's the mute button. There's that dual gain and headphone volume. And then on the back there, you have your XLR input. You have your headphone monitoring out for real time monitoring your RGB button to change the lighting on it. And then you have your USB C there as well. As far as the capsule. This comes off really easily. You just kind of pull it off. It's nice and thick in there. So hopefully that helps with plosives. You can see the mic capsule right there. It has about that much space from the end of the microphone and then the thickness of the, the, um, uh, the pop filter, maybe about another quarter. That is the body of the microphone and it feels good. This is plastic, but the rest is metal. And then that is plastic. So the shock mount is plastic. Now this is a very, very interesting microphone because it is a dynamic microphone. It has the USB-C connection as well as the XLR connection. And the features are really cool on this. There's not a start and stop, which I don't like when microphones don't have a start and stop for the gain. I like to understand exactly where it's no and where it's all the way at the top. What they've done is they've digitized this and they've made it into a light. And so when you turn it all the way down, the gain will flash, but the light turns completely off around the ring, around the knob there. And then as you turn it up, the light becomes more and more brightly green. And then it does another thing. When you get to the top, it flashes again in that same green color to let you know that the light or that the max uh, gain has been met. Okay, so this is what you can expect when you're listening to the XLR connection. And as you can see, there's no lights on or anything like that, which means the USB is not plugged in, which also means I cannot direct monitor from the microphone itself. I have to route my headphones through the audio interface down there. So this is the USB only connection, and this is what you're going to be hearing when you have it plugged in via the USB only. Now, again, this is a USB-C connection to a USB-C connection with an adapter for a USB-A if that's the port that you have. But that makes it flexible so that you can plug it into gaming peripherals, the PS4, the PS5, as well as laptops, USB-C based Macs and things like that. OK, this test is a handling test. Now, somebody mentioned this in the comment section below that the microphone, the PD100U, sounded like it had handling noise. Now I was being extremely aggressive with that microphone because I wanted the emphasis on the boom. I replaced my last mic, but here is the sound of the microphone. And so I'm hitting this boom arm here and you can hear that I'm hitting my desk. Um, I typically don't test stuff like this because I always have them on a boom arm and I, I mean, I'm not coming into contact. I'm not grabbing it and stuff like that, but that is a valid question and thought that he had because depending on what you do, 
you might need to know that. So let me know what the Hannity noise sounds like. Um, as far as regular use, I've done it this whole time and using this microphone in regular use, there hasn't been any noise, but that may produce some, but I was purposely hitting the boom arm. I love their software. It's so simple. Um, as you come into here, so we're just going to go through this. You can see the gain knob here. You can see the headphone volume here and you can turn that on and off. You can also control, uh, the mute from here thing, but right now uh, you can hear the sound again. This is the original sound that you're hearing right now. This is what it sounds like if you move to the deep sound, right? And so again, this is that customization that the software allows you to do over here is the natural sound. Now this basically removes as much processing as possible and tries to give you that truer representation of your voice. Although sometimes I always feel like I sound a little bit more nasally in these type of natural circumstances than I actually do in real life. Not sure. Can't really hear myself. Um, this is the legacy sound. And so this is kind of really, really full. I mean, there's mid, there's low, um, there's low treble in this, in this, uh, low highs right here. Um, but that's the, the legacy there. Now moving over to the RGB sound or RGB sound, RGB, you can control it from here. As you can see, the light went off on my, on my microphone, and then you can turn it back on. You can control the brightness from here. You can go through all the different colors, if you will. And this is, I guess, the universal gaming, which is the rainbow light. Um, but you know me, I'm gonna rock this white. Uh, but going over to the advanced side, you're going to have the same at the top up here. You're going to have the mute. Um, you're going to have the gain. You notice that the sound changed right away is because I'm in a flat profile. And so that uh, removes most of the processing sound and it gives you just that flat signal, kind of clean up anything, any lows, highs, etc. This is going to be your high pass filter. And so you hear that it's higher. There's less lows in there right here, you're going to have that presence boost. And so this is kind of what you would expect if you're doing a podcast, because it's making the presence of your voice more impactful, mids, highs, lows, cleanly adding to the sound. And then right here is going to be your high pass filter, taking away those lows, as well as adding in that presence boost. But the flat is going to be more or less what you're going to be using. Now, a limiter is what you would use in case you're worried about um, sound and sound getting away from you. For instance, if you are playing a game and you're yelling, you kind of going to do something like this. And this allows to make sure that you're not going to be screaming and then you're going to be clipping and different things like that. Now the compressor is exactly what it sounds like. It compresses the sound down. And so you're, it will basically, once you set the compression, it will basically move everything into that range. And so if you're speaking really quietly or if you sound really loud, it's not going to be too many variables. It's going to try to bring that sound together. Um, that's like an audio thing. You're going to usually hear that when it's, you know, music and stuff like that. But the software is extremely simple, but it is extremely effective. So the pros for me are the features. There's so many features on this microphone and at sub $80, that's just crazy. And then on top of that, you have the software and the software can um, completely changes what you can do with this microphone and opens up another world of sound and sound output and customized options. Now, the only uh, things that I don't like about this is that the, um, the gain, the dual gain and headphone uh, button there does not have a start and stop. And I like to be able to switch and touch and just turn it to stop and then move it forward when I'm working with my microphones. Um, but outside of that, the obviously the RGB is great. Um, and most like most of these combination XLR slash USB microphones, when you are using the XLR, you lose all the other functions like the RGB, as well as the direct monitoring from the headphones right there. But typically you would control that and listen to that through your audio interface anyway, because it's usually going to have a better mic output um, and better gain control and sensitivity to gain control. So um, that's not really a negative. It's kind of just like it is what it is right but um but that's it i think this is an amazing microphone i think this is one of the best values of the year most people do have biases it's just whether or not we can be subjective when we're sharing the information to the audience which i can be subjective but i want you to know i love this brand they make really good microphones and you can hear that so i'm not pulling your arm or your leg or anything trying to sell you something this is a really good value compare this to other microphones on the market in the similar price range, as well as those price ranges above it. And you will be able to see that, but let me know any questions you may have in the, in the comment section below, as always stay cozy in that crazy world. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.